welcome to this second tutorial of the java basic series i am krishna kansal from gray salmon software solutions as in the previous class we have discussed uh, about the features of the java language why java language is a platform independent language and during this we have studied ki java language is a platform independent language because of the java virtual machine and what is a java virtual machine java virtual machine acts like a mini operating system for all our java programs mini operating system in the sense the jvm is having all the information about the underlying platform so it provides all the resources which are needed for our java programs so our program is first uh, is in the form of source file with the extension dot java then the compiler as we have used in the previous tutorial uh, the compiler will compile the source file and the class file is generated and this class file is executed by the interpreter and the environment is provided by the java virtual machine then our program will execute and java is a platform independent language it means this is a sample java program if you compile this java program and the byte code is generated now you can run your byte code in your win32 unix or max os platform this all we have done in the previous video tutorial now in this video tutorial we will start with the basic programming of a java language ke how to write the program in the java language and how to compile the programs in the java language now as in the previous class we have discussed when we install uh, this uh, java development kit from the sun microsystems website in the uh, jdk 1.6 that is the java development kit 1.6 there are the subfolders and in the bin folder uh, this java is the interpreter for java language and java c this this is the compiler for java language now as a sample program we start with this program each and every program in this uh, of java language will composed of a class your program should have at least one class so in this program we have declared a class then you have mentioned then you have to mention the name of the class now this is the opening body of the class and this is the closing body of the class and as in the all of the programming languages like c and c++ the execution of a program will always start from the main method and this is the main method of java language this is the name of the method from the from where the execution of your program will start and this is the return type of main method return type means this main method will return nothing in the later video sessions we will study okay, what do you mean by static what do you mean by public and this main method will take one array of strings as a parameter array of strings means simple strings like hello is a string word is a string so it will take one array of a string as a parameter what is the use of this uh, string array we will uh, see this in the next video session now as in the c language as we used to write the statement uh, like printf in the c language and in the double quotes we used to give the string which we want to print in the java language we have to use this statement system dot out dot print ln and in the double quotes the string which we want to print or we are which we are interested in printing on the command prompt now where to save this program so this is a simple program we have declared a class this is the opening body of the class this is the closing closing body of the class this is the main method you have to use the signature as it is without any changes like this s is capital here we will discuss why this s is capital all is this in smaller case as java is a case sensitive language in this particular statement system dot out dot print ln this s is a, is in capital letter now uh, for uh, to be brief this system is a class out is the property and print ln is a method 
we will discuss okay, what do you mean by a class what do you mean by a property and what do you mean by a method now we will save this program uh, now we will save this program in the jdk and in the bin folder in the later classes we will study how to save these programs into our own directory now we will save this program now our program exists in the bin folder here it is our program now to compile our program we will first open the command prompt on on the command prompt we will reach to our directory that is jdk 1.6 then it is cd bin and now we will invoke our interpreter javac 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 or java c it means java c for compiler if we enter this key then this is the output which is generated by the compiler it means our compiler is online now java c give the space then write the name of the class and the extension of your file a dot java if our program contains some of the error the error will be displayed here on the console now i hit the enter key uh, if the program is uh, compiled successfully here like this now i will again get the command prompt now uh, my program is converted into the platform independent code now let us see now this a dot class file has been generated now a dot java is the source file now if we view the source file in the notepad this is our original program class a and this is main method and this program is simply printing one string hello world in the output when we run this program we will get this string in the output now this is a class file this class file is generated by the java compiler if we open this class file and we will use to uh, notepad to view this file now this is a byte code now this byte code is a language independent code now this language independent code means when we execute this code like here uh, in this particular slide now we compile the program with the help of compiler the compiler is java c or javac and that was our program the java program we compile the program and the class file is generated in our case the name of the program was a dot java and we compile the program the a dot class file is generated as we have already seen here this is the file a dot uh, java and this is the file a dot class if you want to view the file a dot class this is the file a dot class fine so a dot java compiler and the class file now we will run this file now to run this file we will use this interpreter interpreter means like here now with the help of interpreter this our program will be interpreted and the output will be shown on the console console means this particular screen now we will invoke the name uh, the interpreter and we will only mention the name of our class file now when we hit the enter key the output will be displayed on the console now this will be the output hello world now this is our first java program now as we have seen okay, this is our first program java program now here is a small question the question number one when you compile a java program written in the java programming language the compiler converts the human readable readable source file into a platform independent code that a java virtual machine can understand what is the platform independent code called the answer is the platform independent code is called byte code now this is the small introduction to the programming language which is common to all of the programming language like what are variables variables are the name uh, memory locations the primitive data type primitive data types means what type of uh, data our language can handle java also so, uh, also supports the numeric type like integer type and the float type and one special type that is known as a boolean type and um, character type fine now these are the numeric data types in the java language byte takes one byte short takes two bytes integer take four bytes long take eight bytes these are the integer type data types and these are the floating type data types 
float takes four bytes and double take eight bytes there are total eight primitive type data types in java language this is one two three four five six two more primitive type data types are hit there all the data types are by default signed data type sign means we cannot make any data type as unsigned like in the c language uh, like the range of the byte is minus 128 to 127 and it will take 8 bit to store our data we cannot change this byte as a uh, unsigned type all are by default signed data types now the two more primitive data types are one is boolean now this boolean can be assigned the value true or false boolean do not support here 0 and 1 we have to mention either true and false in the form of the string all of the data types in the java language are initialized automatically to their uh, default values this data type can never take the garbage value like we will discuss a byte short int long these all initialize with the value 0 like byte will initialize with the value 0 short will initialize with the value 0 integer and long with 0 l either capital l or small l this is the default value for long and the float float is initialized with the value 0, 0.0 f small f or capital f and double is also initialized with the decimal value 0, 0.0 so these are the default values of these data types they never take the garbage value like the default data type of boolean is false if we only initialize the boolean y and here we put the semicolon this y will take the default value false so we can declare a primitive type like this boolean x equal to true or boolean y is equal to false and the default value is false there is one more data type that is your character now in this java language the character is of 16 bits and this character supports unicode unicode means you can provide the input in any of the language either german language chinese language french language it is not only concentrated only to the english language so these are the basic initial uh, initialization example of a uh, data type uh, okay, how you can initialize a variable byte array character variable and all that now these are the string basically a string is a class in java language in the later video session we will study what you mean by the string but uh, for now you can uh, consider string as a type so we can uh, uh, initialize the string uh, like simply uh, I can create the strings like uh, this string and the uh, is equal to then the double quote the inside the double quote I can provide the whole sentence so for a time being you can consider this also as a data type uh, now for a demonst uh, demonstration program as we have already seen uh, this was the basic program now we will come uh, this is uh, our class the name of the class is print args now this is the java convention okay, while naming your class the every alpha starting alphabet of a class should start with a capital letter this is only a convention which everyone should follow now this is the opening bracket of the class and this is the closing bracket of the class this is the opening bracket of main method this is the closing bracket of main method now the uh, syntax of the for while if statement and the switch statement is same as that of the c language now this is the for loop now uh, what this for loop is doing basically uh, now uh, as we are uh, as we are as you can see this main method takes one array of strings as a parameter now this array of string is used for command line arguments command line arguments now command line arguments are the arguments which are provided at runtime Runtime means when you uh, compile your program and after compiling when you run your program. Now while running the program if you want to provide the argument 
then you can provide the argument in this way now these two arguments are known as command line arguments uh, now in the later video session we will execute the program of this command line argument and we will also solve some of the questions uh, bye for now good day